Welcome to worship. It's good to see you. Uh, we have a baptism this morning, and it's really nice to see Alan and Terry and Hallie and the rest of the family that has joined here for this. It's good to see you. Let us worship God. Praise is due to you, O God, for you answer our prayers. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance, O God of salvation. You are the hope of the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. The whole world is clothed in your glory. Let us shout and sing together for joy. Let us pray. Loving God, we've come to this place and time to worship and praise you with glad hearts. Thank you for the opportunity to sing and pray, hear your words, and share our joys and hurts with you and each other. Bless us all as your children in this hour, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Scripture reminds us that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So let us honestly and humbly take this opportunity to confess our sins and embrace God's forgiveness. Let us join in praying the prayer of confession that's printed in the bulletin, and then let us offer our own private silent confessions. Let us pray. God of compassion, you show mercy to the needy. Exalt the humble and humble the exalted. When we were low, you lifted us up and fed us with the bounty of your goodness. But we have set aside the humble ways of humility. We have become rich in our own eyes vainly proud of our strength and accomplishments. Merciful God, forgive our arrogance, our smug sense of self-reliance. 
renew in us a meek spirit. Teach us to clothe ourselves in humility, and so that we will seek to give you all glory in all things for all your wondrous acts on our behalf. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us, rose for us, reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is past and gone. A new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please be seated. I have to say, uh, a little bit of the sounds of babies being baptized that morning. And they would baptize one and move them to the corner, baptize a second, move them to the corner. And then one of them in the corner started crying. And it was infectious. And pretty soon we had a dozen babies crying in the corner. And, <laughs> but it's all good. It's the family of faith. We're glad to, to have kids in here. Uh, we do have a baptism, and the choir is going to sing in just a second, but Marion Wright Edelman quoted Edmund MacDonald, who wrote, When God wants an important thing done in this world, or a wrong righted, God goes about it in a very singular way. God doesn't release thunderbolts or stir up earthquakes. God simply has a tiny baby born, perhaps of a very humble home, perhaps of a very humble mother, and then God waits. The great events of this world are babies, for each child comes with the message that God is not yet discouraged with humanity, but still is expecting goodwill to become incarnate or real in each human life. And so God produced a Gandhi and a Mandela and a Harriet Tubman and an Eleanor Roosevelt and a Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. and each of us to guide the earth toward peace rather than conflict. And that line, the great events of the world are babies. So we celebrate the birth of a baby to a family in our church, and the choir is going to sing. I was there to hear your born and cry, and the words to the fourth verse are printed in your bulletin if you would like to join in at the end.
So would Ian and Caitlin and Jesse and whoever else please come on up to the front. Oh, and Brooke. <laughs> hey, Jesse. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Here are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called to be his own. In baptism, God claims us and demonstrates that we belong to him. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptisms as we celebrate this sacrament. Caitlin and Ian, Please show your purpose and choice now by answering these questions. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Do you trust in him? Do you intend your child to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? Would the congregation please rise? Our Lord Jesus has ordered us to teach those who are baptized. Do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Jesse by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Jesus and to be a faithful member of Christ's Church? Do we? We do. Please be seated. And let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks for the countless ways over the ages you have revealed yourself and have blessed us with signs and symbols of your grace. We praise you for sending your son Jesus, who was baptized in the waters of the Jordan for us and was anointed as the Messiah by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you that in baptism you give us your Holy Spirit who teaches us and leads us into truth, filling us with a variety of gifts and talents so that we might uniquely proclaim the gospel and serve you as members of your family of faith. To you be all praise and honor and glory forever. Amen. Okay. And his first two names, his Christian name. Jesse Blaine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll be right back. I want to introduce you to our congregation and let you see who's out here. Oh, got some water coming down your face. There we go. There we go. That's good. Hello. This is Jesse. Little Jesse boy, about six months old. He's quite an armful. <laughs> Hello. Hello, this is Jesse. Jesse's going to be coming around one of these days to Sunday school and BBS, maybe youth group and confirmation class, and getting to see everybody at potluck suppers and all kinds of things. Maybe crying in church now and then. Who knows? But that's okay. That's okay. He's a good boy. Yeah. Well, see what love we have from the Father that we are called his children. 
And so we are. There you go. Let us pray. Gentle Savior, giver and keeper of all life, we offer to you now our thankful praise for the birth and life of young Jesse. Let your personal assurance rest upon his family. Gently remind him over the coming years of your strong presence and sure guidance. Help your church to be a good and Christ-like influence in his life so that he may come to know you personally and trust you completely. Guide him as he grows in faith. Give him understanding and a quick concern for neighbors. God of grace, we pray for Jesse's parents, Caitlin and Ian. Help them to know you, to love with your love, to teach your truth, and to tell the story of Jesus' good news to Jesse and Brooke so that your word may be heard and known. Let your peace and joy dwell in their home, that their family life may be instructed by faith, sustained by prayer, filled with joy, and governed by love. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God be with your family. We have his picture and a flower. If one of you can hang on to that for us. And you guys can go back and have a seat. Congratulations. You can go back. Congratulations. Our responsive reading today is Psalm 84, verses 1 through 7. In it, you'll hear reference to the Valley of Baca, which means the Valley of Tears. But with God's presence in our lives, it becomes pools of life-giving water rather than tears. Please join me in this reading. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. Together, they go, go from, from strength, strength to strength. strength. The, the God, God of gods will, will be seen in Zion. Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel according to Luke, 18th chapter, beginning at verse 9. Hear the word of God. He, that is Jesus, also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. That ends our lesson. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Back in high school, I had a prank pulled on me by some of my friends. The way it worked was one of them would tell a joke that had a punchline that made no sense, but he would tell it as if it were the funniest joke in the world, and all my other friends would laugh hilariously, 
And the prank was to see whether I would join in and start laughing also, to just be one of the crowd or whether I would uh, say that doesn't make any sense. So they told this joke. Jeff, did you hear the one about the two penguins in a bathtub? One said, pass me the soap. And the other said, what do I look like, an alarm clock? <laughs> well, I laughed along with everyone else as if I got the joke. Not really getting it, just trying to fit in with everyone else. Soon thereafter, they told me what the real joke was and that it was on me because I didn't get it. Not quite getting it. That happens back in high school. It wouldn't happen in church, right? Well, apparently it does. Uh, some folks who have written announcements in bulletins have not quite gotten it and not really noticed the mistakes that they made. Uh, so these are from bulletins that have been collected over the years. Here's the first announcement. Don't let worry kill you. Let the church help. <laughs> For those of you who have children and don't know it, we have a nursery next door. There's a potluck supper next Sunday at 5 p.m. with prayer and medication to follow. Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a chance to get rid of those things not worth keeping around the house. Bring your husband. <laughs> this morning's sermon, Jesus Walks on the Water. The sermon next week is Searching for Jesus. <laughs> Last one. The Low Self-Esteem Support Group will meet this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the church hall. Please use the back door. So from school to church to just about any, anywhere, folks don't always get it. And that's what I think the gospel lesson is about today. We have two characters in the story Jesus tells, and one just doesn't get what prayer is all about. So this week I'd like to look at the two men praying and spend my remaining few minutes today on why an upright, rather godly citizen is used as an example of what not to do and why a traitorous, sinful leech is praised for his prayer. Let's look at the two of them and see where we fit in between them. First, there's the Pharisee, who gives an eloquent but haughty prayer. Let's keep in mind, though, that this guy was not a villain. He was a good guy, probably a good neighbor, the kind you wouldn't mind having next door, the kind that would actually return tools that he borrowed. If our church were filled with members just like him, we would probably have a million-dollar budget and be the envy of our denomination. Although we'd really be just all show, with no real heart like we actually have. But this guy also fasted twice a week, he said. Now, there was only one day a year that was, it was required or mandated that you fast, the Day of Atonement, but those who wanted extra credit were suggested that maybe you would want to consider Monday or Thursday as a day to fast. And this guy didn't just do the minimum or even what was expected, he did both of those days as well. Today, we have diets where we fast or we ultra slim fast to try and lose weight. But back then, fasting was not for a, a health reason, it was for a spiritual reason. Now, personally, I have tried fasting, and the point of fasting is to focus on God and God's glory, but whenever I've fasted, all I focus on is my stomach and how hungry I get, and when will this be over so I can eat again? My meditation is on hamburgers and Sundays. But this Pharisee prayed and fasted as if it was the latest popular diet making a big public scene over just how good he was being. Oh, and he says he tithed. Tithed. Do you remember what tithing is? You may have heard me mention it up here uh, as we're doing worship, and I say, now let's receive our tithes and offerings. Tithe means a tenth. It's an Old Testament rule that stated that the first tenth of anything that you make or harvest or raise belongs to God. So if you 
made $10, then you should put a dollar in the offering. Not so difficult. If you make $100, then 10 is your tithe. But if you're making 50,000 or 100,000, then the tithe gets to be a good bit more. And this Pharisee tithed of all that he owned. And must have been awfully proud of it because he mentions it to God in his public prayer as if God didn't already know and made his prayer loud so that everyone else would know of his generosity. So the Pharisee had reached the goal of donating 10% of his income. He fasted twice a week. He was upright and noble and completely full of himself. The passage says that he prayed to himself. He wasn't praying to God. He was actually talking to himself out loud so that anyone around him could hear his prayers as well. And that's because he just doesn't quite get it. He's like a Western set for a movie where it looks like a big, full town, but when you walk around the corner, you see that it's just a bunch of storefronts propped up, and there's really nothing back there backing them all up. So what of the tax collector? He performed his job for an occupying government and lived off of the excess taxes he could wring out of the people. He was not well-liked. But this man, this man understood his place in the cosmos and couldn't even look up to speak his prayer when he went to the temple. He knew that he didn't measure up. Florence Nightingale said, I must remember that God is not my personal bellhop. It was a tax collector who remembered that and the Pharisee who just didn't quite get it. Jesus has us then compare those two prayers. And hearing them in the same story makes it apparent what he was getting at. Comparing can make all the difference for us. One time Kay was working on some cross-stitching and she had me help her figure out what five different pink threads were. There was pale pink and light pink and pink and dark pink and mauve. And if you looked at any one of them, you would just say, that's pink. But when you compared them together, then you could see the difference. On their own, each one looked about the same. It's like going to the store to pick up some white paint, and you get there and you find out that there are dozens of whites that you can choose from. It's only when she laid them all out that I could see the difference. And it's the same in our lesson today. The, Pharisees, the Pharisee compared himself to all the riffraff that he could think of and found himself doing quite well, thank you. The tax collector compared himself to God and understood how far he fell short. So, some questions. Are we like the Pharisee or like the tax collector? Is there something behind our storefronts or do we practice the trappings of the faith with no conviction behind it? Do we picture God as our personal bellhop or do we accept our place in his creation and allow him to be Lord of our lives? When we pray, who is it to? Ourselves or to the Lord of heaven? Do we pray up to God or just sideways to ourselves and anyone around us? And I think the answer to all of those questions is yes. Yes, we congratulate ourselves very often publicly when we do something morally upright. And yes, there are times when we see ourselves for who we truly are and whose we truly are. Yes, we pray up to God at times, and yes, we often pray sideways with no true faith behind it. The point of this parable is that we're, we're not one or the other of these who are praying. It's that we have both in us, and we need to recognize that and work toward a goal. The key to effective prayer is the relationship we have with the one that we're praying to. The Pharisee didn't get it because he was really only praying to himself and to anyone nearby listening. Praying isn't about reciting how good we are to whoever happens to be listening in the room. It's about talking, chatting, confessing, or sharing with someone we have an actual and meaningful relationship with, whom we know best in Jesus Christ. It's communicating, just talking with God. That's all prayer is. 
And when we pray, it should be in a trusting attitude that God, who promises to hear our prayers, will certainly hear and respond lovingly. The, guest, the great preacher Spurgeon once said, there's no need for us to go beating about the bush and not telling the Lord distinctly what it is that we crave at his hands. Nor will it be seemly for us to make any attempt to use fine language. But let us ask God in the simplest and most direct manner for just the things we want. I believe in business prayers. I mean prayers in which you, talk, you take to God one of the many promises which he has given to us in his word and expect it to be fulfilled as certainly as we look for the money to be given to us when we go to the bank to cash a check. We should not think of going there, lolling over the counter, chattering with the clerks on every conceivable subject except for the one thing for which we had gone to the bank, and then coming away without the coin needed. But we should lay before the clerk the promise to pay the, to pay the bearer a certain sum, tell the clerk in what form we wish to take the amount, count the cash afterward, and then go, go about our way to attend to other business. This is just an illustration of the method in which we should draw supplies from the bank of heaven. So let's remember who is the Lord of our lives and try to live his will when we're off our knees as much as when we're on them. As those who sometimes live for others to see our good deeds and as those who sometimes live knowing our true place in this world, may we, rem may we remember that our best way of staying in balance is to speak our thoughts, our hopes, our insecurities, our wishes, and our daily lives with the God who is always ready to listen and to respond. Prayer is our link, our power source, our lifeline. May our prayers be up rather than sideways. Let us pray. Dear Lord, accept us where we are, limited, impure, and often too self-serving and take us a step at a time closer to what you made us to be, so that our lives might shine some of your light out into a world desperately in need of illumination. For we pray in our Lord Jesus Christ's name, in whom we trust. Amen. Printed in our bulletin is the Apostles' Creed, which we will use to state our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome to this beautiful day of worshiping our loving Lord with a baptism and song, his word, and fellowship. We're glad that you're here, especially those in the sanctuary who are visiting for the baptism today. Welcome to all those in our extended family of faith who are with us online. I'd like to highlight just a few announcements from our bulletin, including that uh, coffee hour is next door. We hope you'll come and join us. And as that begins, we're going to uh, put together the boxes and start filling care packages for our college students uh, who are out there. And uh, this is just a, a nice way of reminding them that we think of them and care about them. So if any would like to join in in helping us pack those boxes, that'll make it go very fast. Uh, hopefully we can finish by 11.15 so that we don't conflict with handbell rehearsal. Next Sunday is the deadline for dropping off candy that we'll give out at Halloween uh, the next day. Again, if you'd like to help, we'll have a table set up out by the road at 3.30, and if you'd like to wear a costume, that's a bonus, but it's not required. Next Sunday is our congregational meeting after worship, uh, which we will be, be having next door in the fellowship hall. There will be coffee and bagels. The uh, deacons are going to provide a number of uh, nice toppings. We have the 2023 draft budget to look over, some officers to elect, and some other business to do. And we're hoping that there will be a representative from Presbytery there to answer any of your questions and walk us through the steps needed in a pastoral search. Uh, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Some other announcements in the bulletin. Uh, one is about a women's retreat coming up in November. The thrift shop has their bag sale coming up. Please look over all the announcements and join in when you can. So let's take time now to approach God in prayer. And in our prayers today, let's remember the following people and situations that you have either listed online or on the concerns list for us today. We have Dave Marion and the Quinn family, Mr. Pipers, Dan Peacock and Jody, Steph, Randy Van Patten, Les, Irene, Eileen, Patty, and Charlotte, Harry and Sylvia, Bonnie, Dennis, and the Cabrera family, Stacy, who just lost her husband this past week, the Barry family, and Jerry, SR, Joanne, Marty Finkelman, who's in hospice, Philip Damico, the family of Donald Davenport, Karen M., Beth, Aaron and Ethan, Joyce O, Doris Z, Ruth B, John N, and Michelle. So let's take a little bit of time now, beginning in silence, as we remember all of these folks and any others that are on our hearts, followed by a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we rejoice in you always. Even in times of trial and seasons of doubt and pain, we rejoice. We come to you on behalf of the world you so love, asking for some of your grace, some of your visible signs of mercy, and changes that we can see that reflect your goodness. When we grow weary, send your spirit to encourage and uphold us. When we're tempted to give in to violence and, or force, Remind us that we are your people and are to be known for our gentleness. Be near to us so that we might know your peace. 
Grant us the strength of faith not to worry, but to instead think on things that are honorable. Help us to live with integrity, showing respect to your creation and to our neighbors. May our actions as the body of Christ reflect your character. Give us the courage to not only think about justice, but to strive and act for it. Knowing that we're united in Christ and called to a ministry of reconciliation, empower us to do the hard, tangible work of repairing breaches and restoring relationships. Reveal to us that which is pure. and Don't let us be overtaken by cynicism. Give us eyes to see you present and at work, ears to hear your voice, however and through whomever you choose to speak, and hearts with your word written on them, which move us to do your work. As we look around at the problems we see in this world and in our personal spheres, give us the right words to speak at the right time. Turn our thoughts always to you so that we will think and act with your loving kindness. Hear our prayers this day for all those we have mentioned, out loud and in the silence, all offered in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, let us bring our gifts to God. We ask that those at home use one of the ways listed in the bulletin and that those in church use the plates that will be passed during the offertory. Thank you. Ushers, please come forward to receive this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, we come with our offerings in response to your love. With the new life you offer to us in Christ, we give ourselves in service to others. With the blessings given by your spirit, we seek to share with others our commitment to your way. Receive the work we do and the gifts we bring, that we may become a blessing as they go out to those in need. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. At home, would you please leave a commit comment or greeting, and those in the sanctuary, please take a moment to greet your neighbors.
So let us go now into the world. Let me turn that down a little bit. There we go. Let's go into the world, remembering that we have God's peace, joy, and love with us. Let us go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who's with us now and forevermore. Amen.